Okay, here's our first example. So just to recap, remember that when we're using pi, we're gonna use a calculator for sure, right? And so, be, get your calculator out, get it ready. All right, now, so I have a cone here. And to, to find, well, I have the formula right over here too. So the formula for the, the, you know, to get the volume of a cone is pi r squared times h divided by three where pi is that Greek letter that is going to be equal to 3.14 and that's what we're going to use when I write it on the board. Of course, like I said, we're going to use a calculator to represent pi like I have when we deal with circles or cylinders, same thing. And R squared, we'll put in this first pair of parentheses and then we'll put the height in the second pair of parentheses and then all this has to be divided by 3. The 3 is just a constant, okay? Now, Radius squared. We have to know what radius is. What is radius? I didn't give any clues this time like I did in the area of a circle. Um, radius is the distance from the center of a circle to an outside edge. In this case, I could probably just go that way. It's that distance, all right? And it is uh, contrastive. I'm not sure if that's the right word. It, it compares very well with diameter. Uh, remember that diameter is the distance across the circle from one side to the other passing through the center or basically the the longest length from one side to the other of that circle and so here in this problem they give us diameter 12 centimeters but we don't want 12 right we, we don't want diameter the, the formula is asking for radius so the radius is half of the diameter okay all right, so that's what we're going to use. We're going to use six. So the, the, the radius here, I'm just going to get rid of part of that circle there, is six centimeters, okay? It's half of the diameter. And that's probably maybe the hardest part to identify in one of these things is what's the radius, what's the diameter, what did they give me? Make sure that information is always organized and clear in our head, right? Okay, so six squared. All right. And the height, or the h times h is 5, that's, that's the height, right? So, 5. And that's basically it. I mean, obviously we have to solve it, but as far as setting up the problem, it's not too crazy. It's just a, a basic formula that you just plug in the information from the, from, the, from the problem into the thing. Radius, make sure you understand what that is. Okay, so now that we have all these operations, let's count how many operations we have. We have pi times radius squared, so we have a multiplication, one multiplication. After that, then we have another multiplication times 5. We have an exponent, that's 3 steps. And we have the divide, all that divided by 3. So we have 4 operations that we have to do. There's 4 things that we have to do. 2 multiplications, an exponent, and a division. Now the question for you is, what, which one of those 4 gets, uh, gets done first? Well, in my video of order of operations, I explain that exponents get done first above multiplication and division. Okay, so we have to do multiplication and division after we do exponents. So I'm going to solve the uh, 6 squared thing. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring down my pi. Uh, 6 squared is 6 times 6 or 6 multiplied by itself or to itself 2 times. Okay, that's what that little 2 means. Uh, you're never going to multiply 6 times 2. That's not, what it's, that's not what's going on when we're working with exponents. So 6 times 6 is 36. Or 6 multiplied to itself twice is 36. And times 5 divided by 3. Okay. And honestly, I don't know what 36 times 5 is off the top of my head. If I did, I might, I might simplify that one one more step just in my head. I think at this point, we're just going to have to go into the calculator, okay? And we're just going to make an approximation. I haven't done this problem yet, so we'll just do it together. All right, so here's the calculator. Our pi button on this calculator is right here, so pi. And it just gives me the little Greek letter, pi, right? Times, uh, oops, times 36 and then times 5. So, oh, I guess I should have said after the exponent, we have multiplication and division. Typically, the multiplication will come first, okay? Uh, all right, for the most part. And in this case, <laughs> you know, when we're talking about the fraction, I want to know what this whole numerator is first. Take that number and then divide by 3. So the, the division will be last, okay? 
All right, back to what we're doing here. We have pi. Trying to find a good angle there where you can maybe see. Uh, pi times 36 times 5. Okay, and I'm sorry. In this calculator, you can just kind of put them all together. Pi times 36 times 5. Enter. And it gives us 565.483 or 0.4866 and blah blah 776. Now, because that's my whole numerator, and I, I am going to approximate, but I want to approximate mostly the final answer. If I need to, I have to divide still, so I, I think I can just keep that whole number there. Watch this. And on this calculator, and pretty much all of them, you just hit divide. Boom. And it throws in that little answer, or ANS, right? Answer. And basically it's saying it's, it's taking that whole long decimal. If I use more decimals, the answer is going to be more precise. And that's why I, I want to do it that way. So answer divided by 3. And that gives us 188.49. Basically 188.5, 0.5. I'll just say 0.5. Okay, so you see how I did that, right? Uh huh. So the volume is 188. Rounding up, rounding up uh, the 0.49 to 5. I'll just say approximate. Why not? That's what those little squigglies mean. Uh, centimeters cubed. Okay. So, again, order of operations is important. We don't want to forget the order of operations. Exponent first. Figure out what that numerator is first, that whole, this whole thing on the top uh, over the, the, the fraction bar. And then, um, and then, so yeah, but out of those steps on the numerator, we have to do the exponent first. And then it's just all straight up multiplication. Get that answer, you can hit enter, and then you get this big number, what was it, 300 and something, I forget. And then I just hit the button divide, boom, three, and I get a really precise answer because I used that whole long decimal after that multiplication, okay? So that's what the volume of the, that cylinder is. It is 188.5. So this, again, just real quick, this is just a basic straightforward. They give us information, enough information, and ask us for volume. That's how you do it. You just go straight forward. Let's look at some where they start taking some of that information away and presenting it in different ways. All right?